Are you tired of looking at your phone all day? How about being online and buying stuff that you really don't need? Well, here at KDY Podcasting, we create more than we consume, and we're looking to help bring out the inner artist in you. KDOI Podcasting. Tune in and be amazed. KDOI Podcasting is brought to you by Gagopod. For storytellers that need a strategy, a platform, and a chance to be heard, learn how you can create your next podcast at gagopod.com. So make sure, word of the wise, make sure your wick is tied to your stick. Uh, That way you have uh, some room to uh, snip it if you need to. Thank you for tuning in to KDY Podcasting. My name is Timothy Kim O'Brien, and I want to welcome you and challenge you to create more than you consume through these podcasts. Uh, we had DJ Vulture here doing in the uh, bumping uh, bump music, and he also does the incidental music. Thank you, DJ Vulture, for all that you do here for us. And uh, just to let you all know, uh, new season, season two, episode two. Um, And we uh, have joined with a a network. Uh, I want to thank my good friend Kyle Bondo uh, from Gagglepod. We are part of the Gagglepod network. Uh, Gagglepod, your source for podcast education. Today's project, think of, you know, your favorite nursery rhyme. Mine was Butcher, Baker, Candlestick Maker. Yeah, that's right, folks. We're going to be doing candles here today. Before we get into the candles and what you're going to be doing and all that good stuff, I want to uh, do a word of caution on this one, especially this project. Because in Season 2, we're, we're, doing, uh, we're doing the projects here. This one can be um, especially dangerous. You can get hurt on this one. Making candles uh, can be fun and safe and easy. Um, I uh, was teaching my uh, stepson on how to do it. Uh, when I was doing this project, and he was all agog about it. But uh, you want to be uh, careful with, you're dealing with the heat source, and you're dealing with hot wax. Now, for some of you, hot wax is exciting. For me, it's exciting as well. You know, melt that wax on your hand and then peel it off. It's kind of like how we did glue in school. You know, you let it let it dry up, and then you peel it off, and all that good stuff. Folks, this wax can burn you pretty bad. Um, And you're also going to be dealing with uh, hot water and you're going to be dealing with a stove. So uh, just be very cautious. You may want to wear an apron for this one. Um, You you may want to have the oven mitts on if you've got some good uh, oven mitts or some good uh, heavy gloves. You may want to uh, take that in consideration for it. Also, uh, pets that are around the house. I've got two cats. Uh, one has one eye, and uh, we call her Ninja. Uh, she didn't get her one eye because of this project. She came with one eye, so uh, you know, save the jokes for later. But um, you want to be careful of pets uh, that are run- going to be running around. You also want to be careful of uh, children. I have two small children, hence the uh, nursery around there. But uh, I've got two small girls uh, that are going to be four this year. Yay! But... Um, I made sure to do this while they were not around, while they were asleep, and uh, Papa can get some adult time in to A, do podcasts, and B, do art projects. So, without further ado, let's talk about this. Now, candles, very romantic, uh, a very personal gift that you can uh, you can really uh, gussy up and make into something very directed uh, and very unique to uh, your loved ones, friends, family, what have you. Have it around in your man cave, okay? It's, why not? You can do multiple things to them. I'm just going to show you uh, a basic uh, candle that you can do uh, in this in this episode. But what I would like for you to do, and this is how the podcast works, is if you go ahead and shoot me an email at kdoipodcasting at gmail.com, Uh, And and shoot me a picture of it. I'd love to hear your story behind uh, how you made your candle, who you gave it to, why you gave it to them, why you designed it the way you designed it. And uh, I'd like to share that with uh, the other listeners on the air here. And maybe even go ahead and call you up and say, hey, why don't we talk about this? 
that would be a fantastic idea as well. We will have guests this season, but this season we're going to mostly focus on the projects um, and not the uh, interviews with the artists that we had in season one. And if you haven't heard season one, by all means, get back and uh, knock out those episodes for yourself uh, as well. Um, some of those folks are going to be coming back in season two. We'll have some new folks in season two that are doing these projects right alongside me and their thoughts and ideas about it and what they did to make it a better project for them and the stories behind it. Story behind candles for me. Well, at one time I lived in Richmond, Virginia. That's what I was doing my, uh, my grad degree in theater education. And, um, I just, I got bored. Uh, I was working three part-time jobs. I was teaching. I was doing shows. I got bored. Go figure, right? And uh, I walked into uh, a uh, craft store. Um, we'll call it Michael's, uh, for lack of a better word. Uh, they're not a sponsor of this show. But I walked into there, and uh, I was just... I, I went down one aisle, and I said, whatever's in this aisle, I'm going to do as a project. And... It was the candle making aisle of all aisles. So I said, okay, well, I told myself I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I had no idea what I was doing. So I picked up um, this uh, package of uh, candle making uh, supplies. Uh, it was a whole kit and it looked pretty easy. And what it was is it was a jelly candle wax. And I read the instructions and it said to go ahead and melt it down, put it in um, a form and let it cool and you know throw a wick in it and you're good to go so I did that and it turned out pretty good I remember it was red it was uh, a cylinder kind of looked like a can uh, but it was a little bit taller than like a soup can and it was very wiggly very jiggly and uh, I went ahead and got a little uh, candle holder for it and lit it and it, it burned okay it was kind of odd it was a wiggly jiggly jelly candle. Go figure. Did I do it right? Probably not. Um, so I went back and I, I read a little bit more on how to make candles. And yeah, I bought some more equipment. And, and by the uh, time I was done, I was making candles like two or three a week and handing them out to people. Um, you know, if I had a hot date, I was a pizza delivery guy. So I had pizza and I had candles right there. Um, I had the bottle of uh, Chianti, and I knew how to, you know, make the smaller candles. So, boom, we uh, we went ahead and did that, and I had my uh, Chianti bottle of uh, candles, like you see in a lot of Italian restaurants. So, I thought that that was pretty cool. Um, and when I was uh, thinking about projects to do for this uh, for this season, the candle project immediately came to mind. Now, I haven't uh, been making candles uh, for a few years, just because life got in the way. And I thought, well, what's an easy project that I can jump right on into and knock out? Boom, candles. And I can personalize it. And oh, by the way, I can put it in my man cave and turn off all the lights, light a candle, and listen to some uh, nice uh, John Coltrane or Miles Davis or Chet Baker or um, Eric Dolphy or any of those uh, wonderful artists. Um, and maybe a little Tom Waits. Who knows? Maybe some uh, Leonard Cohen on vinyl, please, folks. Vinyl is the way to listen to those. I want to make sure that you all have this opportunity to learn how to make candles. It is rather easy. Uh, I find it. Uh, I find it easy, and I find it very personal because you can uh, deal with uh, colors. You can deal with scents. You can deal with the actual container and gussy that up. Um, you can uh, put uh, little mementos in the wax that after you you know burn the candle, you have a little uh, something there to uh, remind you of the evening if you want. You know, you can throw a little uh, trinket or maybe um, uh, a ring or, you know, that would be a great idea to, you know, if you're going to propose to somebody, boom, put it in the candle, burn the candle all night and go, oh, by the way. There's your uh, engagement ring. Let's get married. What we're going to do is we're going to talk to you about some basic supplies that you're going to need. Now, for the actual melting of the wax and, and putting everything together, I figure about 30 minutes, 45 minutes, um, and then you're going to want to let that candle set at least at least six to eight hours. Overnight is best. Uh, I would say, you know, do it you know, at dinner time uh, or do it on a Saturday after lunch get it all set up, get that part of it knocked out, and then let that thing cool off. 
Another safety uh, tip uh, that I learned the hard way, folks, don't try to cool it off too quick. Don't throw it in the freezer because then it's just going to shatter whatever container you have in there. So don't put it in the freezer. Don't do that. But here's what you're going to need. I went ahead and bought a, a pound of paraffin wax, a thick glass container, and that glass needs to be thick. Now, if you go into uh, these uh, craft stores and get the little tissue paper uh, uh, thin glass, that wax may crack it because that wax is going to be hot. It's going to be screaming hot once you pour it out. So a, a thick glass container, it should have some weight to it. And you'll know, what, you'll know what I mean when you go in there and, and, and take a look at some of those glass containers. The one that I got, and I shopped at Michael's, and again, Michael's is not sponsoring it. But um, if you are looking at the pictures there, the one that I got already had um, a wick and the wick glue uh, in there already set in the glass container, and it had a top for the glass container. So it was made for that. So you can go ahead and get one of those. You can get something that's a little bit more decorative, or you can decorate your container and and we'll talk a little bit more about that later on down the show you want to get uh, now if you don't get the container that I got you'll want to get wick and wick gum uh, you'll want to get some dye uh, you'll want to get a stir stick now that can be a wood stir stick uh, I you probably do better with a good wooden dowel for that and two pots to make a double boiler now let's stop there for a second What's a double boiler? Well, a double boiler is kind of like what it sounds like. You're going to be boiling water. And how you do that is you fill one of the pots up, not all the way. I would say about less than half, more like a quarter to three-eighths. And you'll take the other pot and you'll uh, put that. And once you get a good boil on the first pot, you'll take the second pot and put that in the water. And so obviously the second pot has to be smaller than the first pot. Okay. Um, what I'm using uh, for for my thing is uh, a kind of like a, a pasta pot, uh, a really uh, not tall pasta pot, but a really uh, a short pasta pot, and then just a regular old saucepan. Folks, the pot that is going to be boiling the water is fine. Um, you can reuse that. But the pot that you're, you're the saucepan that you're going to be putting in the wax, you have just, you know, uh, ruined that pan. So you're just going to be using it for wax. So where can you go get this kind of stuff? You can go to your, you know, you can go to Walmart or Target and get some cheapo stuff. That's fine. Um, you can go to your Goodwill. Uh, you're going to go to a garage sale. Go meet your neighbors, you know, buy their stuff, and then go make them a candle. How nice would that be? That's a great idea, Tim. You should uh, you should really uh, think about that. I I think I will. So again, I want I, I can't stress the danger enough because I've burned myself enough on this, and I don't want you to uh, go ahead and you know burn your kid or burn your cat or burn your dog or anything like that. Um, just be really careful with this because you're going to boil that water. It's going to get really hot, and then that wax is going to get melted, and that's going to be screaming hot. So just just be on the safe side. Now let's talk about costs on this. All right, so that one pound of paraffin wax uh, was about about eight dollars. Uh, the glass container was about five dollars. Wick and wick glue. Um, I'd say get a set of it if you're going to be making a lot of candles, and they come in different lengths. Those wicks come in different lengths, so you want to make sure that your wick length is above, you know, where the top of the uh, where the top of the container is but not like a foot above it, just enough above it so that you can give it a little snip and get it um, maybe a quarter inch to uh, eh, more than a quarter inch. I, I take that back. About uh, uh, one to two inches above the, the top of the container. Uh, that way you have uh, some room to uh, snip it if you need to. Uh, the die, uh, again, grab a set of that, uh, about three bucks. Uh, stir stick. Uh, dowel, you can you know you can get that anywhere for free. Um, you want two pots for the double boiler. Like I say, uh, go to Goodwill, do a dumpster dive. Probably pick those up for about five bucks each. So total cost is twenty six bucks. Now keep in mind that, um, and you should be able to get two uh, candles out of that. Two candles that are about oh maybe three or four inches high with a diameter of about an inch and a half. 
you should be able to get about two candles out of that. Now you're thinking, Tim, two candles, 26 bucks, and, and you know we're not doing a whole lot of decoration on this. Keep in mind that you know your biggest cost is going to be your wax. You can, I'm just doing a pound of wax with this one, with this thing. Um, if you're going to be doing this, go get you a big old slab of wax and get a hammer and a chisel. And that way you can break apart that wax. Because that's what I used to do. I used to get a big, like, 10-pound slab of wax. And then I would just chisel away what I needed to uh, to do and, and melt it. And that's how I did it. Um, with, the, with the dye, uh, a word of caution on that one. Uh, for this project, I did a liquid dye. I would strongly recommend that you do... A, a solid dye. Uh, it melts better and incorporates better with the wax, but we'll talk about, a little bit about that later. So yeah, that 26 bucks, you're thinking, well, you know, I can go to Yankee Candle and get something. Yeah, you certainly can, and you'll get something that smells really nice and looks kind of pretty and looks like every other candle in there. Or you can do it this way, and you can put in the smelly, nicey stuff. Uh, you can put in, you know, some sand or some rocks. You can put in uh, the engagement ring or a tennis bracelet or something along those lines. And are you going to find that at Yankee Candle? I don't think so. So let's talk about our process here, folks. All right, so you want to prepare your glass container. What do I mean by that? Well, you want to take that glass container. You want to make sure it's nice and clean. If you're going to be uh, putting some sand or some rocks in that, have that nearby. Have that uh, handy for yourself. I would have a second glass container uh, just nearby in case you melt wax and you have too much wax. That way, if you if you have if you've melted too much wax, because your first couple of times you're going to be like, ah, I'll throw in a bunch and you know see what see what I got, and you don't want to overflow this. You don't want to overflow the container. So prepare the glass container. Make sure it's good and clean. Make sure you have a spare. So that way, if you got overflow, you can get that knocked out. Um, you're going to take your wick and your wick glue and you're going to put that at the bottom of the wick there's this little metal stand that it that it's attached to you put the glue uh, or the gum underneath that little metal stand and you shove that right into your glass container and your top of your wick you may want to get another dowel and you're going to uh, tie your wick to that dowel and you're going to put that right over the top of the container. Why do you want to do this? Well, you want to have a nice straight wick because when that max, when that wax uh, gets melted and comes on in uh, and that if that wick is all over the place, you know, or if it, if that wick isn't uh, tightly secured to the dowel, it's going to fall right into the wax and how are you going to light this thing? So it makes your word of the wise make sure your wick is tied to your stick. All right, so step two is, you know, uh, what I was saying earlier, fill that uh, double boiler, fill that uh, first pot up about a quarter to three eighths of water, crank that heat up on your stove, and get that thing a bubbling. All right, once it's bubbling and, and good to go, throw in the other pot, get that, get that other pot nice and warm. You don't want the water to go into the second pot. You know what we're going to do? We're just going to call it a saucepan. You don't want any water going in that saucepan because that's where the wax is going. So you don't want anything to contaminate that. And if you see in my picture there, you can see that, you know, I've got it rocking and rolling just like that. It is going to produce, you know, steam. Uh, so be be cognizant of that. You're, you're going to, your, your skin is going to love you when you do this. Okay, folks? Hey, it's a twofer thing. You get a great candle and you get a nice steam on your face. What is better than that? I don't know. All right, step three, pretty easy. Put in the wax, all right, and, and, and let it fully melt. Uh, with the paraffin wax that I use, it melts clear. It comes, it looks white and cloudy um, when, when you're pulling it out of the package. It melts clear. Uh, so you'll, you'll be able to see that and just make sure that it's all melty, melty. Um, step number four. And this is while the heat is on. You're keeping the heat on. Um, you want to mix in your dye until it is melted and completely incorporated. Now, for this thing, I used a liquid dye. I'm probably not ever going to use a liquid dye again. 
if you're looking at the picture there, you can see I'm melting a block of wax and I, I put some of the uh, red liquid dye on there. I tried uh, blue liquid dye uh, first uh, on my first uh, third pound of wax. It didn't incorporate too well. When I've done a solid dye, it incorporates a lot nicer. So you can do it when your uh, wax is getting just about all the way melted, throw in that dye, incorporate that stuff and get a rock and a rolling. Um, the, the, the solid dye is a lot more concentrated. It's like a thousand times more concentrated. I don't know if it's a, a thousand. We're going to go with a thousand. You trust me, right? Tim says it's a thousand. It's a thousand. So make that happen for you. Now here's where the dangerous part comes in. All right. If you're looking uh, at the uh, pictures here, you're going to see that I don't have my, I don't have my wick tied to my stick. All right. Make sure your wick is tied to your stick. But pour your wax in slowly, evenly into the glass container. All right. Um, make sure that you know your saucepan has a round, a rounded off edge. So that way you can get a good stream going. You don't want you know to have it have that stream be anything but nice and smooth. All right. This is hot wax. This this stuff is coming at you at about 200 degrees. So it's going to burn you. It's going to burn you good if you get it on you. So like I say, wear an apron, um, wear some gloves. Uh, if you got some oven mitts, fantastic. Knock that out for yourself. Just so that way you have enough control. Okay. If you get those big old poofy oven mitts and you can't really hold anything with that, that doesn't do you any good. So give give you something that gives you protection but gives you control. And remember, folks, make sure you're you make sure if you don't tie your wick to your stick you're going to be in trouble. So make sure that wick is tied tightly to your stick. So in uh, step six there, we're going to trim that wick and let it set up. Um, and there I have my stick. I have my wick tied tightly to my stick, which is the way it should be. And that's my oven, folks. Um, it's got a little bit of wax on it, as you can see. All right. So lessons learned here uh, for you. Uh, the first one, um, you know, I've been making uh, candles for a while. Um, this has been my first attempt in, in a few years. I would say probably about five or eight years. Um, my first big takeaway on this, folks, use a solid dye, all right? Uh, just save yourself the uh, grief. Use the solid dye. The liquid dye it didn't it work too well for me. I've always had a lot better luck with the solid dye. And it'll incorporate, it, the solid dye will incorporate uh, into that wax a lot better. Make sure that you do your prep work uh, to the container. So if you're going to have sand, if you're going to have rocks or pebbles, if you're going to have that ring or that bracelet or something like that, then it's going to be a surprise for somebody. Make sure that's all set up and good to go. So that way, when you pour that wax in, you can put in your additives, whatever you're adding into it, okay? So make sure that that prep work is all good to go. Make sure you have an extra glass container in case you melted too much wax and you need to get rid of it. Don't put your wax down the sink. Just don't do it. That's I, I'm, I'm stupid. I did it one time. I'll never do it again. Make sure that you have something to dump it into. Okay. Preferably a glass container. I've been on this uh, Zambuca kick uh, with tea for a while and those always come with wide mouth glass containers. Make sure you have one of those there with you. And that Zambuca stuff, it's fantastic for your gut. So make sure that you're doing that. Uh, take care of yourself, folks. If you, Like I said, if you need to do a double four, make sure you have that container. Now, there's a cool thing that I used to do is when I would uh, make candles all the time, I would let I would do two different colors in the same candle. So the bottom would be red and the top would be blue or what have you. So how did I do that? Well, I would let the bottom, uh, well, because you can't, fill the top part first and then do the bottom part. A eh, little bit of logic there, Tim. Come on now. So what I would do is I would uh, fill the container up to about halfway, maybe uh, just under halfway, and let it get solid. Let it, let it get solid. And then the next day it would come in, melt some more wax, put in the second color, and then pour that in. So what you got is you got two different colors. And it was fantastic. And what you, another thing that you can do with that is the first color that you put in, you put in one scent. The second color you put in, you put in a different scent. So that way when that thing burns down, you know, you're getting peppermint, you know, for wh however long it burns. And then you get to that second color and you got spearmint. What's the, what's the difference between peppermint and spearmint? 
about a buck. I don't know. That's a little uh, thing that you can do to personalize it. Um, I had a uh, old uh, uh, old ex girlfriend of mine. Of course, she's ex because I have a wife and not a girlfriend. Um, not this girl though. That not my wife, but an old friend uh, way back in the days. And what she did for me is she w I would go ahead and make her the candle. And then she would uh, take some like wax paper or some really colorful uh, translucent paper and then kind of paper mache the glass container. So that way when it was burning down, um, the light would uh, shoot through it kind of like a uh, stained glass window. So that was a fantastic way to, you know, personalize it uh, for the two of us. So I did, you know, the hard work. I did the dangerous work and she did the, uh, the stuff that made it look pretty. Um, the, the container, you can do anything you want to, you know, uh, glue some beads on it or crap like that. Knock that out for yourself and make it happen. You can do it with forms. There are forms that you can pour your wax into um, and it'll make different shapes. I used to do that, but I, I'm going to tell you folks, it was a big pain in the ass. It was a huge pain in the ass. Getting up, You had to spray the form and make sure it was absolutely clean. And then you could uh, get some special release paper that hardly ever worked. Or you can get some really hard plastic uh, in, in your form that you know hardly ever worked. Uh, I had a rough time with it. I'll, I'll be honest with you. I had a rough time with the forms. Um, they worked half the time. They were kind of cool. You can do ovals. You can do circles, triangles, squares. But um, it was a real pain in the butt to uh, clean them out and to get that wax to release so i just went ahead and said you know what i'm going to fill up glass containers and knock it out of the ballpark and that's what i do uh, at this point well there you have your candle right there that's the finished product uh you'll see there at the uh the last one and you see the the book clock that we had last episode um waiting right there so we're going to have more and more projects and we'll add them onto the pictures and you'll get to see them so folks how this works is I want to hear your story. I want to hear you. Uh, I want to hear what you did, why you did a candle, um, what it meant to you, and how special it is to you. Uh, this candle that I'm doing here um, is, you know, part of the uh, projects that we're doing uh, for this season. Um, you will see it pop again later uh, at the end of this season, or you'll probably see it. I wouldn't even say at the end. You'll see it uh, pop up here and again, um, just to uh, make it a nice, pretty picture. But I want to hear your stories. You can reach me at kduipodcasting at gmail.com. You can go onto our Twitter account at kdui underscore podcasting and uh, do that whole Twitter thing with us. Um, you can uh, knock us out at our website, kduipodcasting.com. And you can go onto our Facebook page, which is facebook.com uh, slash uh, tkbrian72. T.K. Brian, B-R-I-E-N 72. And that's uh, my uh, Facebook page uh, for you folks here. Uh, I definitely would like to uh, hear from you and, uh, you know, take snap a picture and show me what you're doing. And we'll uh, definitely bring you on the show and talk, uh, talk about it. Well, folks, as I'm wrapping up this episode, I, I definitely want to thank, uh, first and foremost, uh, you, the listener, for being here with us and uh, for sharing uh, your, your time with us. I know it's valuable to you. Uh, if you're out there uh, working out at the gym, hey, throw on another 10 pounds, okay? Or hit that elliptical for another 10 minutes. You're doing your, you're doing your body good. Keep that up. Uh, I also want to thank uh, Kyle Bondo, who uh, has helped me with my website and helped me get my podcast to uh, the where, where it is right now. And I do want to thank uh, Gagopod, uh, who is my network sponsor. I'm proud to be a part of uh, Gagopod. Um, let's spell it out for the kids, shall we? G-A-G-G-L-E-P-O-D.com. Gagopod. You know, it's our source for podcast education created by podcasters for podcasters. Uh, learn more when you go at uh, Gagopod.com. Check them out. Uh, we have a lot of uh, podcasts that are on there for you right now. And uh, we definitely want you to get involved in podcasting. I would like to get you involved with uh, creating some projects. Let me know how you're doing with it. Let me know if you have some issues with it. Folks, if you mess it up, that's okay. At least you tried it. Because, you know, look at your neighbors. Uh, look at your friends and your family. Are they doing this? Mm, maybe they are. Maybe they're not. 
but why can't you do this? And start that conversation with them. Create more than you consume. Um, I know it's a catchphrase. I know it's my touchstone, but I'm serious about that. I want you to create more than you consume because it brings joy into your life. Um, you know, you can go to Yankee Candle, you can go to Walmart, you can go on Amazon.com and, and, and buy this stuff and, and hand your loved ones a gift card and go, here, go get whatever the hell you want. Or you can go, you know what, this candle, yeah, it's a little bit funky looking, but you know what, I made it out of love, out of the love that I have for you. Um, that's why I do this podcast, out of the love that I have for all my listeners. Uh, I want to inspire you to uh, go ahead and do whatever art you want to do, whatever you want to get into. I want to break down that barrier for you, and I think that we're doing pretty well with that. Let me know what you think, kdoipodcasting uh, at gmail.com, or you can go straight to the website, kdoipodcasting.com. We do this every two weeks, folks, um, and, and you know we uh, release it every uh, Saturday morning at uh, 7 in the morning, Eastern Standard Time. You don't have to be awake at that time. You can listen to it any time at all. You get on, your, uh, you get on uh, Pocket Cast, which is the uh, pod catcher that I use on my phone all the time. It's a fantastic uh, service. We're on Spotify. We're on, um, we're on Sprecher. We're on all your major podcasts. We're even on iTunes. Um, I know it's Apple Podcasts. Sorry, not iTunes anymore. Apple Podcasts. So go ahead and check us out there. Hit the search bar, KDOI, and you should see us pretty, uh, pretty up there, pretty up there, because there's not a whole lot of people that have KDOI in their podcast name. Again, I want to thank you for tuning in, and we're gonna go ahead and let DJ Vulture take us on out of here, folks. Create more than you consume. We'll see you in two weeks. If you're going to be doing this, go get you a big old slab of wax and get a hammer and a chisel.